proves why we need more short track racing. That right there proves why we need more short track racing. That finish and the way that this race ended today was about as old school NASCAR as you could get, but definitely doesn't change the fact that I'm sure we are going to see a bunch of double standard. I'm just going to get right into it and we're going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about any of the other stuff first. I'm going to cut straight to the chase or to cut to the Logano. So here we go. Chase Elliott and Joey Logano's incident towards the end of the Supermarket Heroes 500 presented by Food City or whatever. The Food City 500 is what this is. Uh, ch name change due to the whole pandemic going on. But in the end, it's the Spring Bristol race and I love the short track racing in NASCAR. High horsepower, especially this low down force, but even without the low down force last year, it was great in the spring, great in the fall. I mean, it, that was just great racing overall throughout most of that. With three laps to go, Chase Elliott on the inside lane going on by, looks like he might be on track to get to get to be able to clear Logano coming off the corner, especially if we like how we saw it in, in a couple times late in this race, where guys would get loose on the top side and tag the wall, and Chase Elliott. You no, know, I've heard some people say like, "Oh, he hit the apron and he got loose," but ultimately, what happened is Elliott goes up the track and nails Logano into the wall, damages up his car as well. You know, relegating both of them to really poor finishes for what were otherwise going to be top five days for both of them. And I'm just going to say this right now before someone in the comment section goes at me. I I still like Chase Elliott after this. And I actually, I don't think that... I. It's really kind of an in-between because it's like I understand that it very well could have been an accident. You know, I feel like the way it was handled post-race is the bigger issue for me personally, but it's also not like it's something that no other driver has done, recently even. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this as at least I see it. I'm also going to pull up the finishing results real quick so I can actually see how it all went. But um, that's what happened on track, and we'll get back to that later. But then you had post-race. Uh, the two went and talked. They had the sky camera, but they didn't have a microphone nearby, so we couldn't hear any of the discussion going on between um, Chase and Logano. Uh, but then when the TV did get down there to talk to Logano, uh, they talked to him. Uh, he said, uh, he essentially said that, yeah, I don't think it, or I thought it was intentional, and that, or at the very least, um, when you make a mistake, own up to it and take the hit or whatever I don't know the exact quote but essentially something like that been essentially uh, Logano just saying he was looking for an apology and Chase apparently didn't give it to him and then they walk down the road a little bit longer Chase then does apologize and say essentially um, the same type of thing that um, the same type of thing that most drivers say when they're involved in an incident, regardless of whether it was or wasn't their fault, is that, oh yeah, so, oh, sorry, um, I just got loose, it was not intentional, and I don't think it was intentional, because I think if it had been intentional, I think Elliot would have done everything in his power to save his finish, but... NASCAR, come on, that could, that definitely could have been a caution to, first off, not completely take Logano out of a, any, any shot at a finish because of a, you know, because of someone else's decision, and also would have given us another chance to see a fight for the finish, but in the end, <laughs> going through it, and this will probably be one of the only mentions of him, you know, throughout today's race, uh, Brad Kozlowski gets the win. Out of literally nowhere, uh, I think they said on there like he took two tires on the last pit stop and was you know, the furthest up the field with fresh tires. So, but he, there was no way he was winning this without this incident with Logano. So, congratulations to Keselowski. There we go. I get, I got the Keselowski counter up to two times. I'll talk about him. That will probably be the last mention of the driver of the deuce, but. 
Um, yeah, in the end, though, just kind of wrapping up my thoughts real quick on the whole Chase Elliott Logano thing. Uh, not a good look for Chase, especially after, and certainly I know that there will be a lot of people on Twitter and whatnot saying that, oh, Chase did nothing wrong, and that's good hard racing. And to be honest, I think that's why we need more short tracks. Um, in particular, um, I really like Bristol. Bristol getting a third date wouldn't upset me all that much, or if there's a track like Bristol somewhere else in the world to try and keep us spread out a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was a fun race to watch through and through, but the cautions were definitely inconsistent because earlier in the race there was an incident with Jones and Harvick where um, the two of them brushed into each other and they kept going and there was a caution. So why on earth, when this incident happened with three to go, coming to two to go, was there not a caution and an overtime restart? I didn't mind that the race, I don't mind not having an overtime every single time. Just seemed really inconsistent, NASCAR, to throw the caution earlier for a lesser contact between two drivers. Um, but then having it be a bigger incident later and not throwing the caution. I would like it if they would not throw cautions for smaller incidents like this all, all the time, but even that wreck, I would have I thought that would have been a caution, even if they hadn't been throwing cautions for the smaller stuff like the Jones-Harvick thing, or like the, I think it was the 53 that spun out, going like 14 miles an hour, I think. Um, I saw some people saying, but yeah, I'm just trying to pull up the results real quick. Um, race results, here we go. Um, but yeah, so in the end, though, it was a pretty good race through and through. We had a lot of cautions in the first half. I thought this was going to be a Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin runaway race. Uh, then Kyle's tires just got old at the wrong time. Um, Denny Hamlin, he was set for a really good day. Um, and then he and Joey, actually, ironically. Um, <laughs> so first, going into one of the corners, um, Hamlin got got loose coming off the top side and tagged the wall. Um, kind of like what I said Ch Ace Elliott could have been hoping for with Logano there to try and clear him off the corner on the bottom of the track. And then in the very next corner after Hamlin's incident, where there was not a caution, Logano did the same thing right in front of Hamlin. You know, screwing up Logano's car a little bit, but more importantly, messing up Hamlin's night for sure, or day, I guess, because the race actually ended in the daytime, despite being a 3 o'clock start time, which, eh, hey, I like it. I like seeing some full day races, even though I feel like night racing is pretty cool. Uh, it does keep kind of the night race special, and, um, but yeah, so kind of just going through. I would love to talk about the top finishers if my phone would actually load the finishing order so I can actually talk about the finishing order. But yeah, so but yeah, when it comes down to the whole thing, this entire race, I feel like was just textbook, especially this final 100 laps, was just textbook of why we need more short tracks and why I understand that a lot of fans you know, are clamoring for more short tracks. Problem is, they also are some of the less watched races. Now, I'm going to be excited to compare. I'm going to be looking forward to this week to comparing this TV rating to the Darlington and Charlotte races that were on FS1 to sh show whether midweek racing really has an edge right now or if it's just going to be a thing where a lot of people would like more racing and more frequent racing, but we aren't going to get it. So here we go, race results. Yeah, so Chase Elliott ended up finishing 22nd, and Joey Logano actually did beat Chase Elliott, so I guess in the end, they both ruined their cars pretty badly, and they finished well down the running order. Um, MTJ also finished quite far back, but uh, Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson in um, second and third. Uh, solid days for them. I would have loved to have seen Jimmy win this one. I was kind of, I was trying to root for him while also rooting for Kyle, because Kyle is my favorite, in case you guys didn't know. I know I probably just lost all, <laughs> pretty much just lost everybody, but uh, I would have loved to have seen Jimmy get this one. Kyle coming home fourth. Eric Jones with a solid top five. Uh, Dylan, hey, Austin Dylan, hey, that's another great result for Dylan. 
And to be honest, something I think he kind of needs because you know, I feel like a lot of people have kind of been talking down about him for a while now. And, hey, he got another, another top ten. Kurt Busch, William Byron. Hey, Christopher Bell got a top ten. And, man, feel-good story there in tenth place. Bubba Wallace. Ryan Priest with one of his best career days, getting a 12th place finish here. I think he did get a top five in the Daytona 500 in his rookie year, but this is still probably, the I would say, the most notable finish for him. At least notable for a driver talent-wise. Um, then the front row cars. Kenseth kind of mired back in 16th. Hamlin ended up way back down the field. Um... And then I guess I'll go through some of the early wrecks. Um, uh, uh, Ryan Blaney, um, nothing Blaney, or Blaney completely at fault for that. I saw some people getting mad at Ty Dillon for that. And I mean, you, you those cars don't just turn on a dime. He did everything he could to avoid Blaney and just ended up running over the front end of Blaney's car and taking the front end off. Both of them were out of the race within two laps of each other. Uh, and then you had the um, Jimmy Johnson Stenhouse incident, which um, I thought was going to be the moment of the race where we were going to be talking about after the race. Uh, in the end, it was a very similar thing. I feel like, at least from my perspective, to um, to where Jimmy was just trying to get in behind Stenhouse. Um, Stenhouse got checked up by um, Kenseth and... It ended up spearing off into it. Actually, ironically, the Camaro point was all it ended up nicking the side of Stenhouse's car as opposed to Kyle, who misjudged it by a little bit more. Still, another misjudgment and another car spinning off. I actually also compared it to, in the moment of, you know, basically reverse of what happened between you know, Busher and Johnson at the first Darlington race back, where Johnson essentially put it in the wall trying to slide in behind um, Chris Busher. Um, back at Darlington, so it kind of seemed like the reverse effect of that, but that ended up piling up Stenhouse, Reddick, Bowman, and Custer, as well as, I think, um, DeBenedetto and Kurt Busch, despite both continuing on in the race, both had, um, had pretty bad damage from that. Uh, Corey LaJoy had a fuel pump issue late in this race. Um, Greg Alding brought out a final caution just for a little bit of excitement, so that's most of my discussion about the race, and I'm going to also real quickly talk about the um, results from Fantasy right now um, as they run. So my mom, actually, Amy, Amy D18, got first place with, a hun with 177 points. Bama fan second with uh, 174. Steve Dyer, 170. GL Racing, 170. He's dominated the season and will probably maintain the points lead with that. Um, Warrior 169, BJ's 1, 157, me 150, 135, Thrasher 111, um, Keystone Guy 1, 104, Snapped and Joe Schmo both down in the 90s, so bad points days for them, R another rough day for me, I'm probably going to be mired about 5th or 6th on points at the end of you know, in the overall standings, just kind of looking at this immediately, but yeah, so rough points day for me in the in NASCAR fantasy. Uh, in the end, really low day, low days all around for all of us. Um, but looking forward to um, next week. We actually have a full week until the next NASCAR race. I will also be watching the Indy car race at Texas. If anything notable happens there, I'll probably talk about it in the um, Atlanta race review. But Atlanta is this weekend. Um, so we will have At Atlanta this coming Sunday for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500, 500 miles at Atlanta. I'm looking forward to it, but yeah, in the end, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a letdown just with how great this um, Bristol always is. So um, thank you guys all for watching. Uh, this has been Ryan Dyer with, or this has been Running with the Pack with Ryan Dyer. Thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video, live stream, or whatever you say I had to do with the rest of your day. Have a great night, everybody.